Hey everybody, Mike McNellis here, and today we are covering everything you need to know about glassware. Some of you may only have one style of glass to drink out of, and that's okay, but you should know that every wine has the opportunity to taste a little bit better if it's served out of the proper glass. And when it comes to distinguishing between a dozen different styles, what we want to focus on is the size of the bulb and the angle in which the glass is tapered up to the lip. These are the two key factors in not only how the wine opens up or evolves in the glass, but also determines how powerful the aromas and flavors will be once they reach the top of the glass. So when making our decision, first we need to determine the style of the wine. Think about its characteristics, and then our choice of glassware should enhance our favorite aspects about that wine. And what characteristics are we talking about specifically? We have the aromatics, what are we smelling in the glass, how intense are these aromas, do we want to concentrate or amplify these aspects? Also the flavors, what do we taste, is it fruity, earthy, spicy? We can think about the wine's age. Some young reds are very powerful and can be tight or closed off early on. Glassware can help with that. Also, how much weight or power does the wine have? Do we want to tame this power or enhance it? What's the alcohol level? We want to experience the subtle nuances in a wine. The burning sensation of alcohol is not something we really want to promote. All of these aspects of style are variables that can be influenced one way or another depending on the glass chosen. So let's take a popular wine style, something with a lot of intense fruit, floral character, a moderate level of alcohol, and no oak aging being used. This could be a lot of things, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Albarino, even Rosé. The list goes on and on. For this style, we want to be somewhere between this range of glasses. And what do they all have in common? First, they have a relatively smaller bulb. These wines generally don't need a lot of opening up because they're made to be consumed fairly young. And their best characteristics are the delicate fruit and floral components. When we have larger bulbs, that means the wine has more surface area interacting with oxygen. When this happens, those more subtle nuances are the first to be released from a wine and travel straight up and out of the glass. So the smaller bulb will preserve this character for a longer period of time because there is less oxygen interaction going on. These delicate aromas are also released quicker at higher temperatures. A larger bulb, once again, will have more surface area, which will make the wine rise in temperature quicker. So there will be a faster depletion of these delicate aromas that we're looking to preserve. Also, when it comes to these glasses, you will see they're all significantly tapering inwards at the top of the glass. This shape acts as a funnel, taking all these wonderful aromas being circulated in the bulb and concentrating them directly into your nose. Something wider like this would have all these great characteristics pouring out of the side of the glass, not allowing us to have the full experience. Now, let's think about if we're having a white that maybe has seen some oak aging or has a creamy character to it or is just overall more rich and weighty of a style. This could be a lot of Chardonnays, a white variety from the Rhone Valley like Viognier, Marsan, or Roussan, or even a white wine from a warmer climate Spanish region. These glasses would all work great, but I would most likely choose the one with the widest lip in the category. These wines tend to have higher alcohol, and we don't necessarily want to concentrate that into a smaller opening. Also with this slightly wider style, the wine enters your mouth at a more spread out plane, which will promote the creamy and rich style of these wines. Okay, let's get into the reds. All of the principles we just spoke about apply here, but we do have one more variable we need to think about, and that's tannin. 
the grippy, drying, sometimes bitter sensation we feel as a result of the grape skins sitting in the juice. Oxygen has the power to soften these tannins out to an extent. Remember, if we have a bigger bulb, we have more oxygen contact. So that means the wine will soften out faster. This right here is one of my favorite glasses because most of my favorite red wines taste the best out of here. Things like Pinot Noir from Burgundy, Gamay from a Cru in Beaujolais, or a Nebbiolo from Northern Italy, especially Barolo or Barbaresco. The one thing all of these wines have in common is that they are highly aromatic and have layers and layers of floral aromas that like to pour out of the glass. This huge surface area gets oxygen circulating around the bulb and releases all these wonderful aromas. And the super intense angled taper brings all of it into one central point for us to enjoy. In terms of the tannin softening ability of this shape, the Nebbiolo also benefits greatly. Next, we have the Bordeaux glass. This is an extremely versatile style as the size and taper angle are pretty much in the middle of the road. But as the name indicates, this is a great choice for any varietal wine or blend made from the Bordeaux grapes, such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, or Carmenere. All work great in this glass. Next, we have a very large bowl with a modest taper. This is for powerful, concentrated reds that more often than not have high levels of alcohol. Things like Amarone or a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Once again, the large bulb allows these heavily structured wines to open up quickly, and the shape leading up to the lip reduces the appearance of alcohol. The wider opening on the glass also reduces the tannin level, giving a smoother mouthfeel. And here is our relatively standard red wine glass. Once again, very versatile and fits a wide range of wines that have slightly less intensity than the ones we were just referencing. A more intense taper while still having a large bowl are great for balanced, complex reds like Sangiovese, whether it's from Chianti or Brunello di Montalcino, Zinfandel with its spicy character and wide range of fruit ripeness from tart to jammy, all the way to Syrah with its smoked meat and blackberry flavor, and especially a New World Pinot Noir that has a bit more alcohol and riper fruit than their Burgundian counterparts. All work great in this glass. And then you have a glass like this one that we like to call a universal glass. Any style of wine we just talked about will do fairly well in this glass, red or white. Uh, it has good depth, a fairly large surface area at the bottom, and a moderate taping all the way to the lip. Okay, that covers our still wines. Now let's talk about sparkling and fortified. Just as in still wines, sparkling wines are made in a range of different styles. And depending on how they were made, the resulting wine will have distinct flavor and textural differences. This combined with the preference of the drinker and or the occasion, all will help lead us to determine what the best glass for the job is. Let's start with Champagne. This region in France makes the most complex, concentrated, and balanced sparkling wines in the world that have a distinct creamy texture and a massively long finish. Wines like this are going to taste fantastic out of any glass, no matter what. So let's talk about how each glass will affect uh, the champagne differently. First, the infamous flute. This is the best choice for maintaining persistent bubbles from the first sip to the last. The dissolved CO2 that makes bubbles in sparkling wine likes to hold on to the walls of the glass so they don't dissipate. The flute also has a very narrow opening, concentrating the bubbles as they enter your mouth, making them even more lively. So if your favorite thing about sparkling wine is that bubbly blast, then the flute is for you. The problem with this glass is that when it's filled up, there's not enough room for me to stick my nose in the glass without getting all wet. 
Also, I can't swirl the wine to allow it to open up. When I'm drinking something as complex as champagne, I want to be able to do both of those things. I'll leave the flute for more simple sparkling styles like the Fruit Forward, Prosecco, or Moscato di Asti. For champagne, a white wine glass will do just fine, but the bubbles can fade a bit too quickly. That's why my go-to is the tulip. Plenty of wall for the bubbles to hang on to, big enough bulb for the wine to open up, narrow opening to concentrate all the aromas and deep enough that I'm not getting my nose wet every time I go to smell it. And then we have the coupe. In a practical sense, a truly terrible choice for sparkling wine because the bubbles fade almost immediately. But there is something nostalgic about this glass. It gives you that Roaring Twenties Gatsby sort of vibe. Great for parties and that's about it. And finally, fortified wines. Fortified means that at some point alcohol was added to the wine. The result is usually a wine high in alcohol, deeply concentrated in fruit character, and with a good deal of sugar to balance it all out. For these, we want a shorter glass with a narrow bulb. With such intense alcohol presence, we want that out of the glass as soon as possible. So we have no inward taping at the lip. It actually goes outward. And it's short enough that alcohol isn't getting stuck down here. These wines are released ready to drink, with the exception of vintage port. So we don't need the room in the glass to swirl and open them up. They are able to be poured and consumed right away. The choice of glassware is one of those things we don't think about very much when it comes to enjoying wine. But it can make a big difference if you know what to look for. I hope you enjoyed this swig on glassware. Cheers.